Hello, my name is Mary DeLay and I'm Director of Performance here at Royal Holloway University of London and I'm also a pianist and I'm going to talk to you just for a minute about Chopin. You'll see the resources that we've put together with some ideas around Chopin and particularly the works that you're studying, the two ballads and the nocturne. Uh, but I just wanted to talk for a minute or two about my perspectives and, and maybe ideas as somebody who's lived with music by Chopin for many, many years. So I studied at a conservatoire at the Royal College of Music in London, and I'd already been learning Chopin uh, before my time there, but it would have been, I suppose, around the age of uh, 16, really, when I would have started looking at these pieces. Some of you play them, some of you absolutely don't. I completely appreciate that many of you don't even play the piano. But these pieces from a pianist's perspective have opened up for me and continue to do so decades later what it is like to play the piano as naturally as possible what you're actually looking for how your hands move over the keyboard but it's not just your hands it's your whole body and I think that's a really key thing that you can pianist or not uh, get from these pieces that you're listening to and also if you watch video performances of them physicality in uh, playing the piano is is hugely important. So it's not only about speed, how quickly you can play these notes, uh, but Chopin really readdressed how the body approached the piano, how to play with natural weight. He wasn't just thinking of finger articulation. Uh, he was thinking about the arm downwards. And that actually affects the kind of sound that you make, how warm it is, how rich it is how you voice these songs. So that's something I would encourage you to listen to as well in these pieces, because the piano is made to sound like an orchestra actually in a lot of ways. And that's not by playing every note in a chord at equal dynamic. There are different things that a pianist will do with different parts of their hands. So that's a really key message, I think, in the music of Chopin and what he unlocked in the capacity of the piano and composition for the piano. And then to take it even further with the form of the ballad, for example, uh, what is incredible about Chopin's music, and as I say, I keep coming back to it um, all these years, um, is how you are invited to create your own story or to use that word narrative through the music, through the drama. There's nothing telling you in words what you're actually supposed to be thinking uh, or what you're supposed to be recreating. So you're give, you have this free reign. Yes, you can hear yourselves in this music how dramatic it is. You might use words like passionate or romantic or nostalgic. But as the performer and the listener, you have that free reign. And I think that is also uniquely um, profound in Chopin's writing uh, of music and music for the piano. So they're my key points really I think or perspectives that I just wanted to share with you um, about how a pianist might approach this music it's not only how it sounds but also how the keyboard and the instrument itself feels and to finish with I also would recommend if you do have the interest or the time to seek out older recordings as well because it is always fascinating no matter what music you're playing or listening to to hear older instruments or how people might have played this music a hundred years ago and you know we learn more about ourselves now and also how music has been performed and how interpretations have been developed um, through a hundred years that is an amazing thing about technology technology not just being me making this video recording for you but when recordings were first being made um, and transferred onto vinyl and becoming something that people could listen to in their own homes. So I hope you've enjoyed getting to know these pieces and finding lots of different recordings and I wish you well. <laughs>